It's up to the new man to bring new life to Brockett Hall. BBC Two unearths trouble at the top. <laughs> Brockett Hall in Hertfordshire, for centuries the country seat of the Brockett family. The ancestral home was turned into an exclusive conference centre by former cavalry officer Lord Brockett. Now the hall lies empty and the Lord is in jail, convicted of fraud. It's January 1997. The staff of 60 gardeners, chefs, housekeepers and butlers prepare for the arrival of their new boss. The new lord of the manor will be former gym teacher turned hotel manager, Michael Longshaw. Daddy going to work today? Yeah. He has. I'm going to work. Where do you think Daddy's going to work today? Get some money. <laughs> That's right. Get some money. I would very much doubt that they're going to treat me like I was a lord. Um, and I think that there's certainly other words that will be used to describe me over the coming months. <laughs> The difficult bit will be bringing people like the butlers, um, some of the housekeepers who've been there 12 years, round to a different style of management, um, which some may not take to. I'm sure that Mr Longshore is aware of the magnificent personality that his lordship had and will find it a great hurdle to surmount. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Longshore's backers have given him just 12 months to turn the business to profit. It's going to involve a whole new way of running the estate and its staff. Can Brockett Hall thrive without the flamboyant lord at its helm? I remember the first time when I came round this corner here and suddenly saw the hall in front of me and I thought, wow, this is absolutely fantastic. What a location. And that's when I really said to myself, I, I want to get involved with this and make it a success. And now it's a little bit frightening because I've never actually run a conference centre, particularly of this sort of style. So in some, in some ways I'm looking forward to it, but in other ways I'm, I'm, I'm nervous about it because it's going to be a very tough job. Longshore's first challenge is to persuade the old guard that Brockett Hall is in safe hands and introduce them to a new team of managers and a whole new world of jargon. I think our key objective is that we are going to be the premier international conference and incentive venue in the UK. We should show excellence in every aspect. That's a buzzword that we've used before. It might not be the right one, but it's the one that we've, we have used and, and effectively it just means that whatever we do, let's do it properly. We will need to achieve £4.2 million in revenue. We need to recruit 150 members for the golf club and we need to upgrade this main hall to a five-star standard. Those are the key things that we've got to aim at this year. The other thing is the structure that's going to help us move back into the fast lane. It's there so that we all know where we're going in the initial stages. Finance, controller, we've got Melvin, Sales and Marketing Manager, Simon. I'm also going to recruit an Operations Manager, Head Housekeeper, but we need somebody who can direct it and drive it forward. So I'm looking for a, an Executive Head Housekeeper. Those are the names in the frame, and that's the sort of way I would see it operating. I think that there is a, an element of concern and probably suspicion about what the... what... Uh, the ultimate direction would be. And as I've said on many occasions, the business was successful and will always be seen as having been successful. It just had one or two problems. Associated with cash flow and understanding. 
15 years ago, Lord and Lady Brockett decided to make their country home pay its way by offering it to top companies as an exclusive conference venue. But Brockett's first love was Ferraris, not business. Faced by mounting debts, the Lord turned to crime to help pay the bills. Brockett devised a five million pound insurance scam, claiming that three of his prized Ferraris had been stolen. But the cars had been broken up and hidden on the estate. An irate Lady Brockett broke the news about her husband's fraud. Brockett was arrested. The conference business was left in tatters and the Lord ended up behind bars. Back at Brockett Hall, the new Lord of the Manor is not impressed with its faded charm. Well, this is probably the uh, most stunning room in the house. But uh, like so many of the areas, it's just getting a little bit worn and tired. See, look at this. Looks as though there's water damage in there. The, we'll have to replace this entire wall cover. That's going to cost a lot of money, but it's just got to be done. Well, this is uh, obviously a room with some history. Looks as though we had a few too many on the carpet, though. It's just everything. Uh, it's, it's worn out, really. That's the trouble. They've done some work here, but it's, it's all come into pieces. It looks a bit tatty now, not charming. So we've got to upgrade it, because the type of people we're going to have in here don't want charming and tatty. They want charming and elegant. So that's the thing we've got to go for. Now Longshaw has to convince his German backer to pay for the refurbishments. He's persuaded him to pay a flying visit to the hall on his way back home to Hong Kong. Hello, Michael. How are you? Good. Her Klosterman owns a string of country clubs in the Far East, and now he's added Brockett Hall to his collection. It's cost almost £10 million to buy the lease, and Her Klosterman doesn't want to spend a whole lot more on refurbishments. The important thing is if you're going to sign off on what we're going to need... Do you want to discuss it today or you want to send it to me? No, I just want to get you to sign off on it today so that then we can get started. <laughs> right. What is your... Uh, this looks like a big shopping list here. Well... We've got a total uh, budget... All together? All together this year... Right. ...of about a million. We needed two million, and we recognised right. that two million would be required over two, possibly three years. Right. If you can commit to letting us go up to about 750 in the next nine months. Um, well, you need an answer by tomorrow night. I'm getting on the plane somewhere. Shouldn't I just review this? I mean, this sounds to me like a lot of money just for uh, fabrics and carpets and... Uh, Yes, I mean, different. you're not building anything new, right? No, but we... Well, I mean, what are your plans then? You didn't buy this as a sort of a hobby. This is, uh, you know... <laughs> I mean, are you um, expecting to um, get, uh, you know, well, sufficient we, uh, revenues to repay this? I mean... The, the immediate thing is that we've, we've got to get the marketing going and the sales, the sales plan. Right. This is not a hobby of Mr. Crosstimer. Yeah? OK, so we'll, we'll finalise it tomorrow morning before I leave. OK, yeah? great. Very good, then. Many thanks. Thank you. OK. Early next day, her Klosterman agrees to spend the money, but Longshaw must hit the tough targets for the year. February, and Longshaw's decided to launch the new regime with a classy cocktail party in a bid to win back business. Mark Gregory, one of the country's top chefs, was hand-picked to serve Lord Brockett. Now he has to show off his skills to his new boss. It's a very big day. It's the launch of... Rocket Hall under the new management, and the first time he's been here to see how we cook and why we do things the way we do them. And there are around, let's say, five, six hundred guests coming, which, to give you an idea, our maximum is normally about 150. So to have 600 is rather a lot. For head butler Alan Davidson Lamb, it's memories of the good old days. Super champagne, non vintage champagne, super champagne. And we'll probably get through about two, three hundred bottles tonight. 
It's down to the housekeeping sisters Val and Brenda to paper over the worst of the cracks. Until we get it cover it completely. Yep. Until we get the new one. It covers that quite well, actually. We've got all these potential customers and clients coming through who are going to have to see us in our raw state and we're going to have to dress it up a little bit and with the lighting very low and hope that they won't notice some of the areas that haven't been touched. It's a fairly expensive deal just for a one-off hit, really. Just in excess of £15,000 for about uh, a two-and-a-half-hour party. So, uh, quite, quite an entertaining party. <laughs> Longshaw's invited all the past clients of the hall and any possible future ones he can think of. The staff, however, are a little out of practice. Nice to see you. Hello, Michael. How's nice it going? To see you too. Very well, thanks. Very impressive. Do you like it? I do. Yeah. What can we do for you now? <laughs> <laughs> a stately home. It's a benefit to have a resident lord and lady. And of course, you know, whether Brock at all has not I don't know. I sort of... Do you not do a lot of functions here then? Well, I hope so. I think there's a little bit of sympathy for his lordship. Um, having launched uh, such a lovely house onto the market and allowing everybody to come here initially, um, I, I think they would rather not make too much observation because of his absence, rather than... Uh, I think everybody has to look towards the future. We've got a load of business cards. Um, and now it's a matter of the graft chasing up everybody, talking to them, getting in contact with them, bringing them back in in the daylight and tying them down to uh, giving us the business, really. Two weeks later, and they're still chasing up the guests from the cocktail party in search of bookings. Longshaw reckons he needs at least two major functions a week if he's to break even. So far, he still hasn't got any. Rachel Hall? Ruth, sorry. With no business in the hall, Longshaw desperately needs to cut costs. To improve efficiency, he brings in an operations manager, Paul Hackett, who doesn't think Lord Brockett's old wine cellars are improving with age. One of the problems that we've uh, inherited is it's a conference centre and basically we should purchase wines when and when we need them and uh, we've inherited um, quite a bit of, of... looks very nice but not producing any <laughs> revenue so it has to go. There's strange things here, there's BC water, there's English wines um, and then there's, I mean there's this here, Corton Charlemagne, an 82 first-class wine, but maybe beyond its expiry days. With different work schedules, housekeeper Val Beadle is also under pressure to step up efficiency. It's just a different style of management, I suppose. Not something that we're all used to. Um, I suppose we've all been left to get on with it as best we can before. But now, sort of thing, you've got more rules and regulations. If, you, if you're working somewhere and you want to continue working there, you toe the line, don't you, or you get out. And at the moment, I'm here. What we were looking at is the overall feel of the building, not just this one space. And if you're going Meanwhile, upstairs, Longshore has chosen teams of designers to pitch their plans for his new look, Brockett Hall. The colours that we're representing there are much more traditional, much more the feel of what the house would have been like when it was built. We're trying to avoid too many soft furnishings in here, yeah. curtains, what have you. They wouldn't have been here originally. So there wouldn't have any one. curtains up here? No. Just keep them they are so beautifully proportioned, it would be a shame to curtain it in a way that was really too over the top for the space. The trouble with all these designers is you give them a brief and you're very specific about what you want. And they go away and they come up with totally different ideas. So we're proposing putting curtains up at the windows. Um, at the moment you haven't got anything there. Um, at, at present, as, as you come into this hall, it's, mm. it's, uh, it's really quite sort of bare and cold and unwelcoming. 
um, and actually probably how it was really meant to be. But I think you're, you're in the conference business here and we really want to, you know, the, the, the welcome you give your guests I think is very important. So we really try to create a much warmer uh, welcoming atmosphere. The danger of one of them is it's going to be too sterile uh, and too much like a museum. Whereas at least with the other company, we're going to see, I think, some soft furnishings and, and it'll be a bit more comfortable, which I think in the long term is what we're going to need. But obviously I'm going to still have to look at the budget costings on it and see what they're proposing. Uh, this, is the, this is the style of the sofa, the fabric for the Longshore sofa. plumps for his favourite soft furnishings, but it's going to cost more. Mm -hmm. March, and they've finally won a booking. But the event is only three weeks away, and the renovation work is running behind schedule. The stairways, the library and the billiard room are far from complete. What about the ceiling? Because we've still got to put the, uh, the fire protection on there. It's not really going to be this colour. He's just putting on the primer undercoat for the niches, and the gold's going to have lots of cracks in it, so you see the red coming through. And then he's going to burnish some of it up with wire wool, so you get a bit of this effect here. And that's going to be all over the niche. Then he's going to put different glazes, and he's going to rub some grit and dirt into it to make it look, uh, to make it look older. Um, and likewise on the, over the doors there. It's touch and go whether the specialist paint finishers will be ready in time. Longshore doesn't want to contemplate the worst. Our real salespeople have been a little bit upset about the red colour, so worried about what the clients are going to say when they... I'm not surprised. <laughs> we've got to camouflage it with the, Actually. with the flowers. Flowers might clash with the red primer. <laughs> this hall must be finished by Easter. If we overrun that, then we're going to sort of really start coming into problems. Uh, we've got the first two weeks of April uh, fully booked and confirmed and paid. April, and Longshore's arriving early to inspect the hall just hours before the start of the first major event under the new regime. There's still some work to be done on the gold niches yeah. on the top. And I believe as soon as once that one done completely again, the red is. Yeah. And then again, it's a waiting for the furniture, isn't waiting it? Waiting for really? the furniture, yeah. Right. Two hours later, and the first guests arrive. <laughs> the entrance hall is almost complete. But elsewhere, the builders have left their mark. David, I know the carpet wasn't supposed to be going back down, but uh, I think somebody's been walking across here with paint on their feet. Yeah, you know, is there unfortunately. Anything we do? You know, do we yeah, we're going to try blue and, or something like that to get rid of it. We'll try and cut some of the top of it and colour it out slightly. So we'll get a blue highlighter. Blue highlighter, it? yeah, felt tip and try and, and just blend it, it in. out. While Longshore covers up for his builders, Leading US bank Merrill Lynch begin their three-day conference. This is just the kind of event Longshore wants to attract. They've got a key people from all over the world here. Uh, so it's, for us, it's a first sort of um, step on the road to recovery, if you like. We've, we've managed to make um, inroads into the refurbishment work. We are still nowhere near where we need to be in terms of uh, final standards and product, but uh, we've got the business coming through and that's the main thing. However, Longshore's tight financial constraints mean they're running short on the basics. Still waiting for the OK to get some linen. That's why today we're just putting clean sheets on the top and clean pillowcases. Obviously, if we had the linen, it would be the whole bed would be changed. Not much else we can do, really. At least this sort of freshens it up a bit. So we haven't got enough cups for anything. That's right. I have to get those in from London. Play plain white, they will be... Um... How, how many of the cups do we actually have at the moment? We've only got about 56. So. 56? Mm. And we're doing 150? Yeah. It's nice to have guests in. That's what we're, you know, here for. But, um... It would be nice if we had enough staff to cope with all the guests. Special sauce. Meanwhile, as the delegates unwind, the butlers are hoping to leave a favourable impression with their vital first guests. 
when we arrived, uh, they offered us uh, some sandwiches, which was good. But, you know, I mean, if you were in Asia, for instance, you could have ordered some uh, hot dishes uh, you know, from the room service. This has a charm, has a style of its own. Uh, there are a few uh, idiosyncrasies around, but that's part of the charm. Redo the carpeting. There are one or two places. That would be nice. Freshen it up. It's um, Below stairs, Longshaw's taking his first good look at head chef Mark Gregory's kitchen. I'm really looking to see what it presents like. It's the first time I've really seen the stuff laid out. So far, it's not particularly impressive. I'm expecting something that makes me go, wow. <laughs> yeah, I could use other words, but I won't, because that'd be rude. But, you know, you want to be able to say, this is something incredible. It's nice and a bit more on it. He's obviously got the ability. His team wasn't very motivated when we came here. His standards when we came here were not good. They are improving. I'm just a little disappointed that there's somebody who's been here for six years hasn't taken the standard up higher. And I hope that he'll come on board and, in, in terms of get the thing straight and, and continue with it. But um, I need a guy there that I can rely on totally. Despite Longshore's reservations, the guests are delighted with the food. And the butlers have managed to get enough crockery from London in time for dinner. Two weeks later, there's a setback with a number of cancellations. It's been a tougher month than we expected. In fact, it's been a lot worse. The concern I have is, is it a one-off or is it an ongoing problem that we're going to be facing? If it is, then we're, in, we're going to have serious difficulties as we go on through the year. We charge £2,000 per 24-hour period, whether or not they use the conference rooms or anything like that. So it's a per 24 hour and you get the exclusive use, so you can use whatever rooms you want to. Some of the clients, you know, they, they liked it in the old days, they liked it when all Brockett was here. But, um, and so some of them won't come back because that's all changed. I mean, we've had people, I've had people inquiring recently that just can't justify the budget. And compared to other places in London, they've, for just a product launch or something like that, were just too expensive. So With the business looking grim, Longshore gathers the whole staff to reassure them. Melvin saying those figures look horrifying at the moment. There's an awful lot to do. But we can make significant savings in costs. We've got to change things. We've got to generate a volume of business. We've got to make this whole thing work. Put in your mind the word fire. It means find incremental revenue everywhere. Maybe the ladies in the flower shop should have a better flower shop and we should be selling flowers to the members. Anything that you think that we can create additional revenue from, fire, find incremental <coughs> revenue. Maybe we should be selling cutoffs of turf to the American visitors. A little box packaged up. I'm not saying Americans are gullible, but they did buy London Bridge. Thank you all very much for your time. Let's go out and make it all happen. While Longshore tries to rally his troops, downstairs in the kitchens, the chefs are staying loyal to the ways of the old regime. Lord Brockett was, um, you know, quite different. Um, you know, he could shoot from the hip sometimes. You think, what on earth is going on here? But at the same time, there's virtually always a thread of truth in what he was saying, even if he didn't know why, he, you know, from a technical side. He would frequently open a bottle of wine and say, try that, and he'd get even the commie and the kitchen porter to try the wine, and he'd tell us why, what was the difference between a burgundy and a claret and all that. And not that they were necessarily, the kitchen porters, terribly interested in knowing the difference between a burgundy and a claret, but it was nice for them to be involved, feel involved. In an effort to improve business, Longshore's trying to sell his brand of class at the country's premier marketing event for conference venues. He's come to find out what makes the other country homes successful. Well, we're actually very busy at the moment. Um, yes, we've actually had a very good three years. Because people said the conference business is becoming extremely competitive. 
Well, it is very competitive. You have got a tough job ahead of you. Um, we all have a tough job most of the time, but it's just really giving the client exactly what they expect. So my sort of confidence is, is being gradually eroded here the more <laughs> I walk around the place. That we're going to make this work and, and more and more people actually opening their houses and i think the houses come alive a lot more being used as conference venues because they're looked after in a different what, way what sort of occupancy um, did you run up last year if that's not a i'm not in a position you're not to going to tell, tell me that I, <laughs> so how do i find that out i really have I to do some know. serious bribing speak to lord northampton oh ouch <laughs> i'm not sure he'll let me know either <laughs> We're all going after the same piece of business. We're going to have to really establish ourselves as something different. Otherwise, we're going to get just lost in the melee of it all. Why should I use Brocket Hall? I mean, I know why I used it in the past, but why should I really use it in the future? Totally exclusive. Um, the flexibility that we have there to, to carry out various activities on the estate. And we but I don't want to see possible. you competing with country house hotels, uh, Michael, because I think there are too many of those we could choose from. We need, we need to see hotel. Brockett Hall really as, I suppose, an intriguing venue, something with a personality. Great. Thanks very much. They don't have the Lord anymore, and we all like Lords are leaping, and Lord Brockett certainly did some of that. So he will be sadly missed, but if we can put something else in that place, then why not use Brockett Hall? Sorry. Sorry. I don't want to be associated with things that I've failed when I personally have been involved in changing the way it works. Um, being part of a, something that's failed for other reasons, which you can't control, I think it's slightly differently. But here, I am in control of what's happening, and uh, to fail would mean that I failed. Job his lordship's not here, he'd go bananas. Summer, and at last, bookings are picking up. The hard work is starting to pay off. But there's a conflict simmering in Mark Gregory's kitchen. New menus are weeks behind schedule, and Longshore is getting frustrated. What about um, up here now? Are we going to go through all those menus and do the same again? Uh, yes, we're in the process of putting together menus at the moment. As soon as we've looked at those, we're going to trial some of them. Obviously, write up the spec sheets, cost them. How long is it going to take us to get to that stage? Probably about another three or four weeks. So, so, so we'll have done. revised menus and everything ready to look at in four weeks? Yes, the, the menus are half written now. It's Fine. really the time consumer thing is writing up the spec sheets. Yeah. It's like writing a book. So yeah. if you've got 100 dishes in total, that's half a book. So. His whole thing just pisses me off. It's the uh, sadness. I don't feel someone has patted me on the back and said, you're just what we're needing. Let's all knuckle down, really get into this together, and um, let's find the solutions to the problems we recognise um, on a more personable front. The thing is, I don't like him. Everyone needs confidence in each other. You know, we need confidence in, in I guess, our owners and then you certainly need confidence in us to operate their business. So why don't you like him? Uh, just doesn't inspire me with, with confidence, but uh, we'll see. With morale sinking as the hall gets busier, Longshore's trying the old Lord Brockett trick and giving his staff a chance to try what the guests get to enjoy. Some of the individuals don't see the rationale or need for the change. Others do but don't understand why or how it's got to be done. And we've individually got to take people through that and show them why we're changing things and um, what I'm hoping to achieve from it. Meanwhile, operations manager Paul Hackett has been sent in to scrutinise the chefs and speed up the new menus. The quality of the chefs, I believe, are quite good, but. Um, they, they don't have the right food that they're cooking, uh, there doesn't seem to be any direction, they're not focused. Basically, they're in the wilderness. Looking at Mark Gregory, I wouldn't say it that he is a great leader, a great motivator, and these are areas that he needs to work on. 
not enough flavour for stops. The, the lobster's there, but... Because you'll just get that little extra... I don't think it works. I don't think it adds any. We're calling it a broth. And really, it's a pasta with sauce. Yep. But more intense flavour. Yeah. Longshore's still way below his targets and is getting worried about facing his backer. I would think Mr. Klosterman gets very bothered if I'm £100,000 short of target, um, as do I. But I hope that he's realistic enough to recognise the trend of the business, and I, I'm sure he does. Mr. Klosterman has accepted that we are on a 12-month um, programme here to put the business in order, um, and sometimes we're not going to hit the targets that I, I want to do. Bullseye. Two weeks later, one member of the old guard has had enough of Longshore's targets. Mark's just given me this letter, and I'd actually thought Mark was going to be the executive chef here for at least another couple of years, and he's decided he wants to resign. Hi, Mark. Thanks for hanging on. Thank you. So, um, I just wonder if you can clarify for me why you specifically believe that you're not the most suitable person to take the business forward? I've lost um, a lot of faith and belief and that has made me a little bit unhappy and if I don't have that then I'm re I am genuinely not the best person for you. Mm -hmm. I mean everybody was keen for the new company to mm -hmm. come in given mm -hmm. what had gone on mm -hmm. previously mm -hmm. but I am working under a great deal more pressure and stress given that we're so short-staffed and we have been busting our backsides in the kitchens. You know, you've got to have unequivocal backing. You know, you're a head of department. You paid a lot of money to make some decisions. I had a discussion with you about the future here, about your development here, and about your involvement in this estate. You can you, be stern with me I, if, I, if, I, if you I, like, I, but I equally, it's a human. It's a moment. human point. If something is going to change regarding one's contract and um, how one works then invariably people want to know what that's going to be. But I don't feel a valued member of the team, and clearly I frustrate you. I think, Mark, I was frustrated with you from day one. You can resign and leave, it saves me a lot of money. If I ever wanted to get rid of you, it would cost me six months contract, plus you've got a, a house on the estate, you've got your family here, which is also a, a thing that I have to bear in mind. But I hadn't anticipated replacing you. I had come to an agreement with you that uh, you were the long-term person who was going to be here, despite my earlier concerns. The hall has just started receiving the sort of business it needs to to survive. Uh, it's going to take me a minimum of two months to replace somebody, and I will endeavour to allow you to be released within two months. But I'm not going to guarantee it. OK. All Thank right. you for your time. Thanks very much. It's my gut reaction is that the, he has been offered a alternate position which suits him down to the ground. This isn't an easy decision at all. Because um, it's not just changing jobs, it's changing a whole way of life. It's going to cause us a problem because it's just at the time when the business is starting to come. Um, and to start changing the chef and to look at implementing uh, different styles, not so much different standards, but different styles of doing things and different ways of doing things will always cause a problem and it leaves you exposed. The uniqueness that was Brockett is, is no longer here. It, it's becoming much more like any other five-star property. And that may be a good thing, it, it may not be, but to me, it's different to the reasons why I originally joined and became part of the team here. Autumn and Mark Gregory has left, but things are looking brighter at Brockett Hall. We've got a new kitchen, whole new kitchen, new head chef, Andrew Gooch, new team of chefs. They've improved quite a lot and we're getting there. Uh, I think in this kitchen that we'll always try to, we'll, we'll never really make it, because if we make it then maybe we'll sit back and so we'll keep on. Meanwhile, it's time for the all-important sales figures. Um, our target was £250,000 that was set. 
We've actually reached that and we've exceeded that by £260,000 worth of business confirmed for the month <coughs> alone, which I think is very good. Well done. Longshaw's back on course for his targets, but things are still tight. Alan. Still trying to source a couple of members of staff just to get us on an even keel. Um, eagerly awaiting a new stock, new equipment to work with. Yeah. Nothing else really to report. There's been 18 months, nearly two years, where the business has quietly slumbered. Um, and the amount of uh, business that's been coming through here is negligible until now. We're only just starting to see it happen. It's now one year on from when Longshore took over at Rocket Hall. Longshore's not quite made his targets, although the hall's been busier throughout the autumn. But will it be enough to please her Klosterman? If we go around to the right Which here. Way? You want to start here? Uh-huh. Well, start over here. Right, yeah, OK. Well, this deck here looks great. While this Longshore fates right well. his backer, yeah. Another member of the old guard has had enough. After 11 years' service, housekeeper Val Beadle is leaving to work in a local travel agency. It's been hard because there's been lots of changes. Um, everything's new for everyone that's come here. Um, it's been very draining, very hard work. It's going to take us probably about three months because we're going to do it in, in three stages. Three months? Three months. My goodness. Yeah, we'll do e uh, each side. Why it takes so long? Well, because I don't want to close the hall down completely for six weeks to do it. Better yeah. hurry up. You know, we've been here now about a year. Yeah. Huh? Unless you work in these old houses, um, I don't think people understand the feeling you have for them because they're very special. And uh, when you're in them, you know, 40, 50, sometimes has been 60 hours a week. It's, it's like your second home. Um. So how do you feel to leave? Yes, very sad. <laughs> Sorry. And and how are sales? Are you, uh, is sales very good. Uh, very positive. This last month has slowed down a little bit, uh, November, December, because right. the conference season, I think, is going. They may be can afford to uh, pay for this. So, uh, well, I'm, I, I'm keeping both fingers crossed and toes. <coughs> and I think we're almost there. Really? Yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, so no, I think um, I've been down a lot the last 12 months, mm -hmm. so um, if we keep it up, we mm -hmm. you may stay at Brocket if we can uh, keep if up can the get this, uh, this, uh, development program and okay. the business. Yeah. yeah. With her Klosterman satisfied and the hall at last making a small profit, Longshore celebrates the future. It's another chance to seek business for next year. Have a walk round and see the things and hopefully you don't notice anything different. The fastest car you're going to get on the estate now. Pathetic, looks like a bit like a Ferrari. One year on, and the new landlords are firmly in control. A dozen of the old guard have left, but the spectre of Lord Brockett lingers on. I'm not Lord Brockett. I don't even pretend to be Lord Brockett. Uh, the, the thing is, he it was him, himself, his charisma that built the business initially. He had a lot of great ideas. It's now a different business. Uh, we have to run a commercial business now.